Welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen, to the Rainbow Six US Nationals. It's time to move into our final match of the night. We are going to see Parallax Gaming go up against a newcomer here, stepping up to the plate for the first time. We're going to see exactly how Katsu does facing off against a team that's been playing here for quite a few weeks now. Yep, so we saw a team go ahead and upset the big name team in a bracket, which was Rise Nation. So Katsu went ahead and worked their way to the finals off of a very impressive win. Then we saw a neck-to-neck -neck battle that Parallax Gaming were able to overcome against Obey Alliance. So shout out to both teams, Rise Nation and Obey, and we'll see you this weekend in a qualifier. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into both of these teams. Let's take a look indeed, of course. But before we end up jumping into that, we do want to remind you guys as well about a contest that we've been running here. It's our Venmo Community Spotlight. You've heard it, I'm sure, but just in case, we're going to tell you about it one more time. Valiant are giving away $700. Stokes, too, once he gets here, are giving away $700 every single week, including $500 for first place. So do not miss your chance to win that sweet, sweet cash. All you got to do to enter is give us a clip. That's it. It to be Rainbow Six related. It can be it. funny, it can be dumb, it can be cool, whatever you want. Get that clip, make sure to put Venmo Community Spotlight on the submission somewhere, whether you upload it to you know YouTube or whatever, just make sure it's included there. And most importantly, submit it to this link at esl.gg slash Venmo dash R6 USN. That link also has a lot more information about the contest if you want to head over there. And remember folks, get those submissions in before the end of the stream tonight, this stream right here, because if not, there's a chance we will miss your submission and have to bump it to next week. When we get off of our Uber, when we get to our apartments, mm -hmm. we're definitely going to start looking at clips. We're going to pick them. Yes. <laughs> and also another big rule, you can't be a European or anything. This is an American show. We, we show love to all the Americans, the U.S. nationals. So you have to live in America. So make sure you submit clips. You live in America. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and jump right into the teams with the first team of the night. It's going to be Katsu, Naski, Habibi, Six, Mean, and Makarov. Muhammad was amazing. He was great. He, he was so fun to watch. Specifically with his buck play. Uh, his buck play was really phenomenal. Like, you know, knew exactly what to do every single round. Got the job done real quick. Was in position. And then uh, just as frag grenade capability was placing them really well. Was using them really often too. Uh, so, you know, never wasting any utility. Almost always, you know, generally on the mark with those nades for the most yeah. part as well. Would have potentially led to a kill in a lot of situations if things like ADS and whatnot was not in the way. So Makarov, especially on attack, is going to be a force to be reckoned with in this matchup. And I think is the focus when it, we talk about individual skill right now for Katsu. Not, you know, not alone in that by any means. We had other players doing really well in that last matchup too, like Six and Habibi, but uh, but yeah, Makarov, definitely the focus for these guys on attack. And uh, their challengers, Parallax Gaming, Cry Magic, Bravo Dog, Blarn, Glamoji, and also Shrines. This team, they're just so unorthodox and they're so good at being crazy that you can't help but love them. Everybody on this team has big play potential. And speaking of big play potential, watch your backs because Cry Magic will rotate all the way around spawn and get those kills <laughs> when he's on defense. Yeah, to keep an eye on him. Yeah, Cry Magic going <laughs> absolutely crazy at the end of our, our previous match. We saw him playing right there, just yeah. running out tunnel, getting kills in kitchen somehow. Like 20 seconds at a time. Still don't know how that kill happened, but. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. The man's going off. Uh, but yeah, so a lot to be happening in this matchup. It's going to be an absolute blast, in my opinion, here. And we'll take a look at the map vetoes here in just a second as well to see where this matchup ended up at. We've been two for two so far on Clubhouse tonight, and we were three for three on Cafe. So we've only had two maps in the pool for this entire week so far. No more Clubhouse. Are we going to expand it to three or? Nope, we're keeping it at two. Cafe. So we're going to end up at Cafe. Long time I mean, no not, see. It's not Clubhouse, but. It's not Clubhouse. <laughs> but thank you. It's Tuesday again is what we're saying. That's a variety <laughs> in our lives. <laughs> so we're going to end up only with uh, two maps played this entire week of USN, at least in terms of the streams on the main stream here. I'm sure that there was quite a few other maps played in like the preliminary matches. Are we getting map. like week themed map pairs or like what? Yeah. Next week we're going to... Uh, like week, coastline. Next week we're actually just playing house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to make everyone play map. house. I actually missed that map. <laughs> But um, yeah, Cafe, this is going to be a very um, dynamic map. The, um, I mean, a lot of variety from what we've seen earlier. But um, those of you on Twitter, we put out a vote. We'll see what you thought. We're going to walk away with the win in this matchup. And this, yeah. All right. We it's got ourselves expected. a match. Yeah, Parallax against Katsu. You, you realistically can't really point a finger on who you think is going to win definitely 100%. So um, you thought Obey and Parallax was a close game. 
I feel like this is going to be even better. Yeah, Katsu bringing some familiar faces and some new blood to the table as well. Parallax, a team that I'm sure most of you guys have been seeing play over the past few weeks and even going back to stage two, were very prevalent there. Once again, making a run, trying to qualify for the Eastern Conference qualifier. It's either going to be Parallax or Katsu that joined Dark Zero in the second position. Let's find out which one it'll be. Just the best of one to decide it. We're going to be here on Cafe. Blarn is so annoying. <laughs> Blarn is so <laughs> annoying. Shut up. The best part is you get them together now, too. So they I can, know, like, They so can collectively roast you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. They're so annoying. All right, Jack was banned, obviously. Not this game. Not this game. All right. <laughs> I like it. There's a good amount of banter coming in between these guys. The Jackal's going to get knocked out. A favorite choice for both of them, but too risky to leave it in on Cafe. So he will be removed from the pool, as he has been doing for such a long time. Thatcher, again, if you saw our show on Tuesday, you should know why we're seeing Thatcher bend out quite a bit. It's just because he's makes you're getting open the walls, especially on third floor, quite easy for the yeah, attackers. So uh, adds another hitch of difficulty to attacking that site. And also definitely some uh, some walls on the basement and second floor sites, too. Right, so the first defender ban, it's definitely going to be Mira. Mira is going to be out of here along with Echo. Um, I'm just going to say, Mira, Mira has to be banned. If Mira isn't banned, I'd be entirely shocked. But Echo being banned, I and mean, we've seen his presence when it comes to whenever a uh, attacker wants to go on site with the objective, you get to stop the defender. Oh, Mira's Mira. in game! All right, this wow. is going to be the first time we see Mira. <laughs> cry. He's like, ooh. Ooh, thank you. All right, so we have Valkyrie banned. <laughs> Well, Cry's certainly happy about that. Might All be right. seeing him on Mira a few times. This is going to be the first time we see Mira on Cafe in USN. I think so, yeah. I have definitely have never seen Mira on Cafe in USN. All right. Well, she, I mean, there's quite a few There's quite a few ways to work her in uh, to this map, especially, again, on these upstairs. I mean, like, every site, she's going to be universally useful here. Oh, she's so. going to be annoying. In chat, you're going to see why. So this is a band that, you know, 9 out of 10 games is not going to slip through. This is a rarity right here. This is a, this is a special moment. First time we see Mirror on Cafe. First time experience for me. First time experience with the chat. We see her here in Houston. Attackers need to locate and defuse. <laughs> They're never letting this go out of here. Shut up. <laughs> like, to be fair, it's like, I didn't know this either, but I was kind of just following your lead, so. <laughs> okay, you know, all these team changes and stuff, I just, I got confused. But it's okay. Oh. I like them and I know they like me, but shout out to Marcy, the Observer. I love when they just roast us. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, um. Yeah, with Thatcher being banned, that means Mute is going to be big when it comes to protecting these walls. Place a Mute Trevor behind the hard destruction, and you have to rely on the IQ or somebody else to come underneath, be ahead and shoot those Mute Jammers out the way. Um, if you don't do that, it's going to be really hard to go ahead and execute. So, let's see what's going to happen. Also, you do not need just an IQ with Doku being on the board. You go ahead and throw a frag grenade up and bank it off the wall. First Mira is down there on the inside of the bathroom, though. I would guess the second one's going to go where we always see Maestras played at. Yep, right exactly on that spot, in fact. Oh, so annoying. But now he does the best part about this. This just makes Maestra that much more OP in that spot. Yes. He doesn't even have to peek it now to get intel. He just literally can just sit there and watch the mirror and then peek it, like, completely safely. He's going to be so comfortable in that spot. So attackers really need to pay attention to that spot, and I think they are. Uh, we more than likely are going to see one or two players start harassing that on the window side of things pretty quickly, just because you cannot let that Maestro sit there unrestricted. Oh, okay. I looked at the chat, and it says Christian North going to cry magic. Is that why the, the name? What's up? I thought they were making fun of me. I think it was the name. Oh. Uh, I think I'm out of the... Oh, they're... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Have we just okay. been out of touch for the last two games? I'm thinking of roasting me, so now I feel better. Now I feel bad for making fun of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really went in. <laughs> oh, I'm insecure right now. I hope they lose. <laughs> like, like. Okay. <laughs> I didn't go that far. <laughs> I like these guys. Chill. Chill. <laughs> All right. So we've got the attack coming in from Parallax now. <laughs> the hatch is being opened up. And they're going to swing in and start taking Christmas control in just a moment here. Obviously having to deal with that wall, but that's not too much trouble. Uh, just have to you know, just take out that jammer real quick, and then you can pop it right open. A little bit. Oh, this brings me flashback to that clip on Twitter. Okay, so <coughs> let's see what they plan on doing with this attack. Pretty sure they're going to jump down red, which is basically, you know, a given. Um, are there any roamers? Yeah, Mozzie's going to be underneath, so... I wonder if he has any drones under his control. Oh, Glamoji saw yeah, he was Ozzy run across. He was loud, too, so I'm pretty sure he heard him from the stairs. Yeah. 
There we go. Makarov again showing up. It's not a grenade, but it's the defender's version of it. Is it going to be able to find Bravo? And well, goodbye to that window. Thought we were going to be seeing Maestro play. No, but instead it's the mirror that goes down to Cry on a leap in here. He's not going to be able to pick up the second kill. And the downside of that now means Diffuser is down on the enemy side of the site. Such an explosive repel entry through that window to take out Mirror. And Makarov isn't done. Able to pick up his double kill. Whoa. And Hey, six and a BB, they're gonna go ahead and join them. Katsu, they're gonna go ahead and win round number one. We still had like a minute Ooh. or two left on the clock, I'm pretty that sure there. That was really fast. That was yeah. really fast. I told y'all this is gonna be a good game. Parallax just was like, yeah, we're just going. I said it. <laughs> to heck with it. So that'll be a success for the defenders, though Katsu will be happy about that one, swinging their way through the round nice and quick. And in the meanwhile, Parallax, of course, will have to readjust as we're heading over to reading room for our next site. Katsu will skip the kitchen for now and save that for the third point on their sight triangle. All right, Mirror once again. Let's see how she's played over here in the um, reading room, fireplace hall. To be honest, I really haven't seen any, you know, high tier, um, tier one or tier two teams play with Mirror on this map. This is actually my first time watching. Mm -hmm. it's, it's I see very it in rare. ranked, but that's it. This is especially on second and first floor. This is a super segmented map. Um, second floor specifically, as you can just see, it's just kind of like a bunch of rooms put together. So. Considering that, Mirror is going to be very powerful in those situations just because of the, how, because of the amount of soft walls that are going to be visible since there's so many rooms being segmented between each other. And that means she can do a lot of you know, wall banging potential here. You know what, I'm, I'm really happy that I'm casting this game because I'm, I'm getting a chance to see who this Makarov guy is. Um, Bomb located by attacker. He's great. He's, he's great. Like, you know, his entry on attack plus his roaming skills on defense. He stays alive. He gets the necessary kills. And him on Mozzie, he is the perfect roamer on defense. You have everything you need. You have a super shotty as a secondary. You have an amazing gun as your primary. Both of them, by the way, the, the Roni and also, um, what is the other one? I forgot. But um, still, two amazing rifles. He has a nitro cell. I mean, he, he has everything. So you have the total tool set in order to roam and be successful. For Mozzie. It's about, yeah, for Mozzie. Yeah. It's just all about being successful from that point on. I think it's called the 554 Commando is the other one. The Commando. I know it's a Commando. Yeah. I just didn't know what... Yeah. Pretty sure that's what, what it is. Okay. So we're going to see the push come in in just a moment here from Parallax. Obviously getting a bit of intel first and we'll clear out the third floor. We do have a, a lot of roaming presence actually from Cats on the third floor. Three players, in fact, up there right now. Uh, but they have control over white stairs, which basically gives them direct access to a site. So it's very quick to rotate back down and get a position. Ooh, twitch oh, Ooh, that's a Twitch drone. Oh, Ooh. yes. That's a Twitch drone going to Mozzie. Oh, he can have fun now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get a shot. Makarov's going to go shooting stuff now. <laughs> oh, shoot shot at a drone. Oh, it's like battle bots, right? <laughs> it's like, come get me. The drone attacking the players now. It'd be your own drones. <laughs> It'd be your own <laughs> drones. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Bravo maintain his position over behind piano right now. Bomb. Bit of a long peek. We see the outlines. They don't. But I'm pretty sure that Bravo's aware that there's Player's hiding now. I'm not sure if he knows how many because the drone was hacked. It's going to be hard to get that intel. I don't think any other drones were able to get that far back into the site. The window, of course, causing some problems for them as well here. They do have pings on those windows. But again, not really meaning much at this point. Uh, they don't have someone to approach the back flank. They're trying to push in through that through that main hallway there, but Shrines, again on this leap in here, is going to be able to find impact for Parallax. They keep letting them get away with that. Nosk, however, is on the other side of the window and is able to trade back onto Shrines. Takes him out. C4 is going to go out. A bit of a Hail Mary, so it won't find much. But, oh, no! Glamoji with an aggressive push. It's right up at Nosk's face, taking him down and giving Parallax the advantage again. Nosk is too caught up on a player repel, and next thing you know, a player runs in behind Bar and bodies him. So now, on board with his six. Can he make this rotation to kill? He sees the arm, he gets it down, and he secures the kill. Blarn goes down, and Katsu now in a 2v3. 40 seconds left to go. But take a look at the health on two out of three players from Parallax Gaming. Less than a quarter for both. Bravo, the only one that hasn't been touched yet this game. They're going to rely heavily on his fragging. I thought Twitch drone is still alive. That could come in heavily right now because we still have the Mozzie in play too. And he could potentially try to... Oh, he just got another one as well. That's another drone going to go under Mozzie's control. Obviously, it's a little bit dangerous for him to go on cams at this point in the round with only 15 seconds left. 
So there was that potential. Would have been nice to see. Either way, though, attempted a plant. Going to work its way in here. Six trying to rotate back around. Lomoji is going to be able to catch his only other teammate here. He needs to make a push in. He might actually have to let this plant go down. He doesn't notice that it's happening just behind him, though. But it's still gives him the opportunity to pick up the first kill. Again, though, he's still misreading this. He still doesn't realize that the plant has happened right below him. And because of that fatal error, a cry magic will clutch it out for Parallax. Yo, so close. All he had to do was look down. But take a look at the patience from cry magic. Players would panic in that situation, but no. He kept his cool, held his ground, and pulled out the win. Great performance. Tied game. And now we're going to go to Kitchen. Okay, I love Kitchen. Kitchen's one of my favorite sites here. But, um, yeah, we saw how dynamic Mira is on this map, and she's not going to get chosen again. Mm -mm. All right. So, yeah, we saw how dynamic Mira was. Mira necessarily doesn't always have to be on the same floor as site. We saw her on the third floor. And the fact that it required so much attention from Parallax, that shows how strong she is as an individual. So, unable to pull up to 2K, she was able to get one kill and really stalled a lot of time from Parallax. But nonetheless, Parallax still overcame that and was able to pull out the win. So, that's going to be that. I don't think there's as many like killer angles you can take with a mirror window on this one. That just causes a lot of problems for the attack. So, it'll shift it away. Uh, in the meantime here, Parallax, of course, still bringing their best to the table. We will see that one get swapped out, and I believe a smoke is brought back into the lineup here for Katsu to play on their, their third round now for this defensive side. So for tying at 1-1 keeps us kind of on par with the rest of our matches for this evening. They've been very close, very back and forth, and there's no reason why this match would have been any different. Ten seconds left. With the Echo Ban, we're definitely going to see Maestro. I haven't seen where the Evil Eye placements have been yet. But Freezer is going to be a big point of contention. You see them destroying the, excuse me, the wall above the reinforcements. That's for impact tricky. Because Parallax Gaming, they're going to have to push them from both sides and try to sandwich Katsu in the site. They're able to do that. It's going to make their job a lot easier than expected. It's going to be Maestro that's going to be in Freezer. So yeah, you see just about everybody spawning over here on the west side of the map. And here we are into the action phase. Can't really move this drone forward anymore. Definitely don't want to have the drone stolen away twice in the sequence of two rounds here. So Glomoji will continue to just kind of hold the angle. Assuming he's going to be able to get someone running past eventually. Again, just biting on the... It'll happen eventually. Timer here, but again, not really any way he can roll in through that window with the drone. So he's just keeping it there for the time being as the rest of the team is actually able to get theirs to the inside and can make a bit of forward momentum now. And most importantly, give the team intel about what the setup looks like. Ooh, they missed the player in prep. Okay, they're not going to go in. I was going to say, they missed the player in prep and try to take Bakery. That could be bad. But it's looking like they're going to ignore the Bakery for the time being and still focus on kind of droning out and dealing with any roaming presence that might be on the upper floors. All right. Yeah, Shrines is going to lose. Excuse me, Twitch is going to lose another Twitch drone, so she's going to back up. And here it is, Makarov once again on top of the kill feed, taking out Bravo Dog. Quality kill, by the way, that's going to be Zofia. So, they... <laughs> oh, no, he's still the Makarov is annoying. <laughs> got the I'm just amazed he got it again after he sat on the window for so long. Right. All right, Dolka B's logic bomb's currently in effect, and you hear the cell phone's currently buzzing. I'm slowly moving in. A BB, oh, a BB gets peeked on. Cry Magic gets to win, but Noski's able to get the trade. Great answer back for Cry Magic. And again, that's Diffuser down early in the round here too, and an advanced position here for Parallax. Second time that issue has happened for them. Thankfully, it's not in a spot where Katsu are going to be able to Ooh. actively defend it. Shrines. Wow. Play on the CZ right there, being able to take out its six, knocking him out, brings us into a two v two. Canadian could never. All right. <laughs> a bomb has been located. So. 2v2. Big quiet. Until now, obviously. Attackers have recovered All the right. diffuser. So let's see how they're going to go in and try to get this plant done. There's no verticality currently in play, and the evil eye has been destroyed. Oh, but with the peak, Noski was able to get a nice little angle. Not a full kill in this case, though, and it's going to go one for one again. Another 1v1 to figure out the end of the round, and a little bit too much peeking there from McCain. Glamoji's given the angle against Noski, taking him out. Katsu respond, or excuse me, Parallax respond, and they will find yet another round here. Wow. Great job for Parallax Gaming. They're starting to pull away now. We're used to seeing a, a back and forth match so far here in USN. This round is going to determine what type of matchup we're going to have this time around. Going to third floor, Mira's going to be back in play. But hopefully Nowski doesn't get too distracted.
by players on Repel while he gets flanked. So pretty sure he learned last time. Him on a, him on Mira is going to be a, a pain in the butt to deal with if you're on Parallax Gaming. So here we are into this next round. We'll push ourselves into it here. This is Katsu's second attempt on this site. Uh, six pick there from the mute over towards a Kate is going to stick, it looks like. I think that's more of like a... I mean, Attackers need to locate will be the reason, bomb. really. For the Cade? Over Mute. Um, they had a Bandit last they time they played this, and now they don't, if memory serves me correctly. So I think that's why. They, they had a Bandit? I don't I thought they I did. remember a Bandit. I could be entirely Maybe you're right. wrong. Yeah, I you might be right. could be entirely wrong. But I don't remember Bandit being chosen. Hmm. Well, the Cade, I think, is going to give them a little bit more room for tricking things, potentially. Um, you can't really trick on Mute. Yeah. So, or at least like not with like you know the placing tricking that the defenders often do. Yeah, but there's no IQ in play or anything like that. So unless you know you have dumb luck just shooting through the floor from underneath, you're not going to be able to get rid of the mute jammers. Yeah. But you know who can? Twitch. But they've done such a great job with hacking those Twitch drones. Yeah, really. They all look at Makarov. The pests have been in like great positions here so far because that's two rounds in almost in a row uh, where we've seen the Mozzie able to steal away Twitch drones and just you know obviously not really do much with it, but cause quite a bit of harm and then still have a defender-sided drone, which just getting one drone is a huge advantage. It lets you basically have a free player in a position watching something and more than likely that won't ever get noticed by the attackers. As unless you're actively on that camera and you know the difference between the colors, there's no real way you're going to be able to tell which drone that is. And everything just happens so fast. Sometimes you don't even notice. The Twitch drone just runs right by you. And we saw it twice so far this round to where, you know, you don't notice that first until he tries his act. <laughs> Makarov being a little bit of... A little bit annoying at the end of the day. So Shrines is gonna. I wonder if Shrines is gonna have a little solo push as Doka be perfect operator to go ahead and do so. But he's been on point. He's been on point. Being able to hunt down the roamers with the logic bomb. I wonder if they're gonna be able to go ahead and try to take care of Mozzie. So we see the people on the roof, but I wonder if they're gonna come in from underneath as well to go ahead and get rid of them. Or just work their way down rest here to. Um, force the attack. This is like a normal push right now for the most part coming in from Parallax. They will put a Claymore down on Red Stairs to try and watch out for the push from Makarov. But it's not looking like he's going to be able to cause too much trouble as he stole another drone away from these guys. Not going to be a Twitch drone this time, but there you go. Like I said, there's the pre-place. It's going to go right under the couch. Probably will never be noticed by the attacker. It's free intel for that. Oh, oh what? Oh. Bravo, that should have been your kill all day, but not going to be the case this time. Bravo with the slow reaction time. He was given a kill and it just slipped through his fingers. So, Attackers have dropped the bomb to Makarov with the great drone work. He's going to be able to let his teammates know where everybody is in piano. A BB coming out from the side. If we get the headshot on Cry Magic. Some more gunfire coming out. Oh, that's great drone placement. Oh, but the C4 is not on. <laughs> it's not on point. BB once again looking for own potential way to leverage himself into this round, and he's going to find it, able to take out Shrines. Bravo, though, on the quick trade. Habibi looking for one more as well, but he's not going to be able to collect the kill so easily. Six also sitting directly behind this mirror window, as he has been for quite some time now, waiting for the eventual swing to come in from Parallax, but without clearing him out, and the rest of the team that has a forward position right now, like Habibi, that is not really going to be possible. Parallax are stuck right now. They have 30 seconds away to try to find a way to wiggle out of this, either by directly pushing that white hole, or, oh. yeah, there you go, Glamoji striking, Being able to find Habibi. So a lot of this pressure goes to six now, finds the trade. Thankfully, a teammate is able to distract. He's even got a hard ping here, too, to try and find a second kill. It's going to be that stolen drone that's helping him out to find it so much. They know where he is, so Bravo Dog can pick up that kill, but Makarov takes him down a second later. Makarov will also fall. They won. All going to down to alive. Nosk. He has to stay alive. That's the game. That's the game. Okay. Nasky patting his stats, getting a kill anyway. He's taking out Barn. Katsu going to win round number four. Let's go. And so Katsu respond. Very similar flair to what we've seen before. So far, that is the only site they've been able to win here on defense. We'll see over the next two rounds if they can change that by shifting to some of these other sites as the upstairs is now locked for them to use. We have a game once again. This is probably the closest um, USN broadcast we've ever had. Yeah, by I far. Say, I would say so. By far. It's always been, it's all three of the games that have like seesawed, at least for all, the beginning of the game. Right. All the rounds are close, all the maps are the same. <laughs> this is USN on <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> by the way, guys, once more, just a reminder, um, in case you're just now tuning in, make sure you submit those Venmo clips because um, 
the moment Blue and I get to our apartment, we're going to go ahead and choose the winners. $500 up for grabs if you place first. After that, $100 each for second and third place. Make it funny, make it good. I don't care. Just make it interesting to watch. We'll go ahead and put money in your pocket. Sure. Here we are. Sure you get those clips in, guys. But here we go into the next round now. Parallax and Katsu tied up at 2-2. Two to two. Parallax looking to push ahead now. I think I want some of these other sites where so far they've been successful on both the uh, first floor and second floor attacks here. Yeah, it was a pretty close round last time we were here. And to be quite honest, Katsu could have won it. Um, Kaid had an amazing angle through that um, A bomb site. He was unable to get the kill. So, excuse me, this B. So it's going to be all up to who really brings it this round again. Like I said, 2v2, Kai choked the 1v1, and Parallax was able to pull out the win. Take a look at the operators, pretty much the same setup that we've seen round in and round out. No mirror this time on defense because she really isn't needed for this setup and strategy for Katsu right now. It's been really fun to watch her be played, and we've seen just how powerful she is on these setups. But on Kitchen, there's no need for her. Well, Moji almost losing his life early on there as he peeks directly at Anoski once again. He's, just, oh, he's, just, he's literally just spamming it on recoil right there, as he saw. He's basically waiting like, all right, Kolodge, if you peek that same way again, you're going to die. This is going to be a headshot, because he already had the lineup before. Yeah. All right, now he's utilizing his patience right now. He knows where they're coming from. There's no secret at all. And yeah, Kolodge is just waiting. He wants this fight so bad with the F2. And F2 isn't a gun you really want to get in a standoff with. It's probably not one of the best guns in the game, if not. The best gun in the game here now. The R4C obviously takes contention on that, but since the A call was removed at the beginning of the year, well, there's been some contention on that, obviously. But up top, Bravo Dog, utilizing that verticality to his advantage. They're unable to see him, but he has a big, wide open view down there in the kitchen. And Makarov taking down one of his castle barricades. I wonder what type of rotation of flank he's possibly trying to make. With the X-Kairos currently going out, it's going to create yet another lane to go into sight. Yeah, here it is, yeah. It's going to pop it open the kitchen hatch from Bakery. That's going to give them quite a bit more room to look inside of this. Again, though, it's will give them a complete hole to push in from, but they've also gonna try and, they're also going to try and push their way in through prep more than likely as well. That the side hall that leads them in from Bakery. A long-range duel finally does not go the way of Makarov. It's a very characteristic thing to see, but I'm sure Parallax is going to be happy about that, being able to cut him out so early. Nosk finds the trade, though. Brings us back down oh. into the 4v4. Shrines brings it right back under Parallax's control, though, by trading out on the Nosky. Nosky peeking once more, and he was taken down, and Blarn is going to be a victim of a headshot as well. It's six on top of the kill feed. But now, reaching down to 40 seconds left to go. This is it. The choke point is here. Toxic Babe's currently in play, and Parallax taking their time and also taking that L. The shrine goes down. Two kills in succession for Katsu right now. We're looking at a 3v2. It's Glamoji. Even the odds. Nice shot from the F2. Oh, make that three. Excuse me, make that two. Glamoji getting a double kill. Nice head shot on a creeping six. Just a couple seconds left here now. Habibi's going to have to try and hold this off. He does not have any more toxic gas grenades to chuck back in for that. And Glamoji will find yet another kill here to end out the round. Beautiful stuff from him. And Parallax will once again push ahead. Yeah, Glamoji is a man of the hour right there. Um, Naski was peeking way too often, flirting with danger with um, Kaid. And they got the best of him. But Glamoji, he was just a grown man that round. Uh, I saw in the future when I said he gets three. Uh, I felt the third coming. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the man was on fire. Whenever you're on Twitch and you get into an engagement, I mean, with the fastest rate of fire out of the rifles in the game, I mean, you're, you're bound to win these fights. But Komoji was on point tapping heads. You'll love to see it. Katsu believing that they were close to closing out that one, which they definitely were coming up until the final moments is going to go back to Kitchen once again to try this for their final round of defense. This will be the end of it, folks, here. We see Parallax come out on top of this one. Definitely going to be a big advantage to come off their attacking half with a 4-2 lead. Katsu wants to stop that by any means necessary, though, and try to tie this up. 3-3. Three to three. All right, let's have it. Hold on a second. ESL just tweeted, they were more iconic duo. They put me with a trash kit. 
What the heck? <laughs> that's, that's pretty funny. I'm calling you out, man. No, 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 no. That's a funny thing. Like, the trash can is like, yeah. you know, I throw people in it. You can't do that when you're live, though, you know? <laughs> it's not right. fair. You can't reply to that right now. <laughs> right? <laughs> people think that they're, they're making a dig at me. Yeah. Listen, the, the ESL Rainbow Six account guy, we're, we're good friends. It's not a roast. So, here we are, 3 2, Parallax Gaming in the lead. Can they pull a repeat of last series? They were up in one round, the next thing you know, they skyrocketed to go ahead, get the big lead, and then the win ultimately, shutting down Obey Alliance. Can they do it against Katsu? That's the question. So, drone work, and where's the site? Is it top floor? Or? Uh, it's kitchen, I believe. Oh, it's kitchen? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. It's all good, so they're yeah. going to try that one more time. Yeah, Blonde's going to go ahead and look for the Roamers because we know the Roamers going to be there. Makarov has been so He bad. almost threw that thing right he into the Mozzie did. again. <laughs> Makarov, he's obviously roaming with Mozzie, so getting him out of the game is vital. But on Kaid once more, Naski is just a force to be reckoned with. He's not backing down at all. He's challenging these fights. It's going to be Shrines with a nice nade, though. Banking it off the corner. Was able to find out six. Would have tried to retreat it once he saw the ADS being drained, but did not have the ability to as they were hard peeked into it. Would have killed himself in the process had he decided to go back there. It's going to be a good cam to have on the inside too. Quite a bit of intel could be given over to Parallax based on that. You can see that right on the inside of the site. They're able to sneak that drone in. Now also with a plus one man advantage here, things are going to start to look a little bit dangerous for Katsu unless they start finding trades. Yep, Lodge of Bomb's currently going off and Mozzie is still alive. That's going to be big. Hard breach is currently happening, and Makarov is going to work his way down white steps. Can he get a kill to help out his team? That's going to be the biggest question. But look at the standstill right now. Clamosian cry magic is peaking. And I believe that's Noski? No, no, it's Habibi. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Habibi. <laughs> He's going to back up for that fight. It's interesting they have the smoke on, like a, like a close angle for some reason. It's like a very risky fight for the Extremely smoke in this situation. Extremely risky. You want to keep him in the back line. Which, like, there you go. He's dead now. So you can't, you can't use it anymore later on. No more Toxic Base. Yep, Mina's dead too. I get, I get why he plays there specifically, right? Because he could easily use the Toxic Grenades to hold back a push from yeah. that position. Um, but yeah, like definitely duff the normal way we would see smoke utilized. And unfortunately, he's paid the price for it two different rounds. Yep, so now you're just depending on Kaid and Mozzie to go ahead and make that play. Mozzie's going to be on the flank, and Kaid is going to hold down the side as the main anchor. Klamoji's finally going to be taken out thanks to Noski and his great gameplay, but you know what? Blarn is just way too good. Oh, no. Oh, with the good night in the chat. Can't do that. Oh, we got to see how this happens. <laughs> Caught him okay. on the run out. <laughs> Blarn saying, don't try me, boy. I run cafe. <laughs> Ash outside for three minutes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them cry. And so that'll take us to the end of the half here. And we are going to be trading out sides. That'll be the end of the second half. Parallax go on to defense with a two-round lead. Katsu jump on to attack. Only with those wins on the upstairs site. So far to take home. <laughs> Blonde with the pop-off. Playing like Makarov and ranked. Um, but speaking of Makarov, he is on buck. And we do not have a mirror being chosen on third floor. I guess this isn't something that Parallax... Um, Either they haven't practiced with it because she's been a necessary ban, or they just feel strong about just not using her right now. They feel strong in their initial strategy without her. So reinforcements will go up. Without the mirror, we will see things played pretty much normally, denying access to the kitchen, as well, or excuse me, denying access to the freezer from both walls, including walling off the bathroom walls there, which was not done by Katsu as they had access to the mirrors, so was able to play Vet of Tad more aggressively. Sides that the operator lineup will remain pretty much what we come to expect from this site, as well mute to block off the drone pathing and prevent late round info from getting through, on top of just your usual spread of defensive utility. And also Mazi still being brought in the, on Bravo Dog to potentially play around with the aggression a little bit. As you can see, he's positioned at the bottom of the red stairs right now. Keep in mind with Mirror out, that run, that lane across bar is gonna be wide open, and the defending team, they're not gonna have any Major advantage unless Shrines has a, a Maestro Cam there to look out the way for him. That's one thing that Katsu thrived on whenever they used her up there. So Shrines, he's going to have that responsibility and it's going to be up to him and only him to hold that down. So you see him pretty much playing solo in that corner. We're just going to call it Maestro Corner because that's where he's going to be every single time. And Habibi with the initial on Shrines. Be able to catch that one. Again, we were talking about in the pregame how strong Katsu's attack was back on Clubhouse. 
And now we're eager to see if that's going to carry over into multiple maps. So far, a good start like that, certainly looking good, as that is the Maestro that they find this early on in the round. He goes down, and that's a pretty big loss, especially if the uh, cameras weren't properly set up, at least like the angles for them weren't. Uh, looks like they're pretty much, you know, pre-placed right from the start, though, so hopefully not too much of a worry. Yeah, that should be good enough. You just can't, you just can't move that one there from side to side, unfortunately. All right, so Hard Breach currently going down, and Red Hatch is currently dominated. You see Katsu owning Red Stairs, and pretty sure Parallax are well aware. Both Maestro being out once again from the first blood within the very first 30 seconds of the round. That's got to hurt big time. Glamoji's going to answer. Glamoji has been on fire lately. Able to get a headshot on Habibi. We're slowing down the gameplay a little bit. It's six is going to have his turn on Twitch. Let's see what he's able to make out of it. Makarov in the meanwhile here getting some spots onto the Mozzie. His doppelganger from the other team there. Not actually act on that, obviously, at this point in the round, but we'll stay aware of it and try to watch out for that. You can hear the uh, Nitro Cell beeping in the distance there, too, as someone was trying to find him. Bravo Dog actually had the angle for a split second. Might get it again if the peak is right, but doesn't look like it's going to end up happening. Oh, no. Detonates that Nitro Cell that was pre-placed from a few seconds ago, though, and doesn't find anything on it. Oh, no, Bravo Dog. Oh, oh, no. He misses a headshot, and Makarov answers back with the confirmed kill. Such a great shot, but Blarn, can he hold this down with Kaid? He's going to be able to do so. If he's able to... No, no, it's going to be... A, ooh, they're, yeah, they're stacking that area right there. That's going to be vital. You have the Evil Eyes currently pinging players over in Piano. But the Diffuser currently going down. Parallax, they do not have an answer yet. Well, guess is here from Blarn as well. Not going to be able to stop it by trying to interrupt it by shooting through the desk. And hit an impact on it there. Get the angle finally and take out Nosk. He oh, was actually looking at someone okay. right there. And is going to end up going down as a result of that. So this is brought into only a single player left for Parallax. Lemoji trying to clutch out a 1v2 after Mean takes out Cry on the wrap through Whitehall. Lemoji, he has what it takes on Jaeger, but he didn't have what it took on that round. Mean Sama is going to go ahead and clean up that kill. Great one from the Gridlock Operator. So, Katsu now down by one round. Parallax, are you going to let them go ahead and tie it up? That's going to be the question heading into round number eight. Spread the lead, have a comfortable advantage, and try to go for the win. They have only three rounds left to go. So, here we are going back to third floor. No mirror in sight. Maybe mirror could have helped them that round. Maybe. The problem is you're gonna have to like open up more walls and stuff to play into a mirror appropriately. It's it's like it's kinda like it's kinda like high risk, high reward in a certain extent. You basically have to have a much more active hold on Whitehall in order to play mirror into it, and then you just boost the effectiveness of the maestro who's usually playing back in that spot by giving him the, the second mirror, usually. Um but yeah, at this point, Parallax is deciding that that's not worth it for them, so they'll Attack continue on without it. At least on this site they will. Yeah, with Mute Gemma's currently in place, I'm wondering if Paralyzed Ape are going to do a good job getting rid of the Twitch drones like Katsu did when they were on defense with Mazi. Twitch drones are going to be able to get rid of those Mute Jammers and also the Evil Eyes, which is going to make it extremely easy for Nasuki to utilize Thermite to open up walls and whatnot. Bathroom, underneath Red Hatch, it doesn't even matter. One thing they're changing for, th for sure this time, because they forgot to do it on the previous run, was they just they uh, they pre-knocked out the paneling on the uh, main desk here on the inside of B. Okay. Because uh, they yeah, missed second. the plant, or they missed the... Uh, they, they weren't able to stop the attempt of the plant. Yeah, Barn wasn't able to shoot that out. line of sight, so that was a big mishap for Parallax Game. So they're going to obviously make sure that doesn't happen again. So, Bravo Dog, a little bit of soft destruction from underneath. He's going to be the main roamer on this roster. It's going to be up to him to go ahead and make the big play. We all saw him miss that headshot in that tight, tight opening that he saw. Hopefully, he will not make that mistake again. So, here on the second floor, a little bit of pre-fire coming through, and <laughs> it's six. It's six. Could have had something if he was able to fire right there. But he had no idea the Mozzie was rolling. Attackers have dropped the bomb He's not going to catch that this time. The rest of the team will end up in an even fight here, of course. As things will be nice and slow for Katsu at the start of the round. Continue to just play for intel at this point, primarily. Six, though, gonna start lurking his way in a little bit. Is that the shark skin? Yeah, it is. Yes, it's the shark skin. 
I've never seen it in action before. I like it. <laughs> All right, so some drone work coming in. It's only a matter of time before Mozzie gets seen. But also, a lot of pressure is going to be applied over here. But the third might be successful with the hard breach. So it's going to be up to Bravo Dog to find a way to be able to, to flank. Red steps, white steps, doesn't matter. To make a huge play for his team. And yeah, cry match with the C4 underneath. That's going to be a big blow. It's going to be two roamers offside, by the way. A little bit off the mark there to be able to find the Valkyrie. So, or excuse me, to be able to find the push from Katsu there. They will still stay alive with all five standing in the process. A minute and 20 seconds remaining here. A little bit slow from Katsu, but they are starting to open up quite a few of these angles. It's the roaming presence from Parallax here that's trying to get aggressive and unfortunately hasn't found a whole lot yet. But with five still standing, Parallax still ready as ever to hold off the defense. That's not going to remain the case, though. Glamoji is found early in the round. Six takes him out to bring us down to a 5v4. It's pretty much a given. Whoever's on Twitch is going to be the person that goes off. And Bravo was able to see somebody for a slight second. But aiming down his sights, he wasn't able to see anything. So, yep, back to drone duty. He goes in. Oh, this is great placement. No, no, no. But the rest here is going to be able to <laughs> detect him. Shrines gets a headshot on Makarov, but Mozzie stays alive. Everybody is just locked in position right now. Here I say yeah. that, but Mean's going to make an aggressive push to try and move forward. Unfortunately, won't be able to confirm the kill. The defender from the other side, I believe, is the Mute. Still staying alive at this point. Mean trying to throw a frag grenade in there. Flash is going to go out first, though. Oh, this oh, wrap no. as well from Bravado coming in just when it was needed. But in the process, Six was able to find out the Mute and take him down from the window, I believe. Bravo Dog, if he ran up just a little bit more, he probably would have got the double kill, but you know what? He's going to have to settle for the single headshot. Six gets to trade in. We saw a triple kill on the screen, but can Parallax pull this out in a 1v3? It's going to be up to Blarn. Make it a 1v2. Diffuser currently going down. Both players to his right. Moving in slowly is only been put down, but Blarn unable to come out on top, and once again, it's going to be a tied game. Katsu making a strong case for their push forward here as once again they take control of the third floor site. Constantly kind of subverting the expectations of Parallax. They've been playing really smart. You can notice this is happening all the time where Parallax think Katsu is going to take an approach to a duel in a 1v1, but Katsu ends up doing something different. They end up taking the, you know, the less traveled path here. They're winning out a lot of 1v1s because they're doing that specifically, and it seems to be catching Parallax off guard quite a bit, giving them the large majority of gun duels right now and obviously allowing for them to take rounds off of that. So we're at 4-4. Katsu's made the two-round comeback. It's looking like Parallax is finally going to give up on trying to win the third floor site and head back down to reading room. Yeah, third floor isn't working for Parallax only for the simple fact that Mozzie and Mute have been taken completely out the game. We saw the C4 attempts from underneath, but other than that, the flanks were denied with the player watching flanking on red stairs. Bravo had a chance to make each play on white, but the hesitation costed him big time. So... Parallax Gaming failed both rounds in a row on third floor, but this time they're going to take it down a level here on second floor. Glamoji, 10 and 6 on top for his team right now, and it's 6 has been doing a fantastic job as Twitch. Definitely has been doing work both from the drone perspective as well as the actual fragging capability that the F2 brings to the table. It's been impressing quite a bit in this matchup, still on the the glory away from uh, from Makarov a little bit, who did great on defense there, especially on Mozzie, but it's been a bit quiet so far in these first two rounds. Not to say he hasn't been contributing, of course, but hasn't had his moment just yet here. All right, one second to go, and here we are in action phase. Pretty much business as usual. I expect Parallax aiming, um, excuse me, Katsu to go ahead, handle, red hash, make their way in, and I wonder what type of defense Parallax is going to have on third floor. We all saw whenever the, the setup was on the second floor, Katsu had a mirror, yet another roamer to stop them on the top floor before they tried to make their way underneath. But this time around, we have a mirror as well as Cry Magic. I wasn't able to see where the placements were, but I'm wondering if it's going to be the same type of defense. So we are going to have players from Katsu take the same approach more than likely. Already have players getting in position to start the push through and through the third floor. Just getting a few little holes punched in here for Habibi so we can see through into Whitehall. Again, that little piece of wood there is probably not there on his screen, in case you're wondering. And basically taking a peek in case anyone from Parallax has tried to hold up here. All right, Nazi's going to have no challenge at all. That's just going to be successful in the drone work. Pretty much we're seeing a, um, 
a repeat of last round when it comes to the steps that he makes when it comes to droning out this floor. But the biggest challenge he's going to have so far, you saw the wall with the execution going around it. Thanks to Kai, that's going to deny any type of hard breach. But with the line in play, let's see what Mean Sama has in mind. He's going to have three EODs. He's going to be able to ping out where players are if they move in the time span that the EOD is currently activated. Already down to a minute and a half in the round, and it's been pretty passive for the most part, to be honest here. You can see not a single tick of damage taken by anyone on all, across all ten players in this match right now. The rest of Katsu still trying to really find a way to clear things out, and weren't able to do that as much in the third floor as they would have liked, so they've gone down here instead, where they're going to start walking in through mining. It's pretty interesting to see Buck go straight in on the same floor on this site. Um, especially with the fact that his versatility comes in big with Skeleton Keys. He can go on top or underneath and really raise hell from that distance. But with the player currently going down, Makarov is ready to go for a kill. It's going to be Barra that's going to be down. I wonder if there's going to be a rotation that's going to be made to help her out. But Bravo Dog is going to be the one on the flank, getting a headshot on Makarov. So the bug player is going to go down, and Glamoji is going to become victim to his greatest operator this round, which is going to be Twish. Cry Magic also down on the ground right now is Rezable, but no longer. Habibi's going to move in, confirm the kill. Brings it down into a 3v3. Only the first Lion Charge going off right there, though. So still plenty of info oh, to wow. try and gather from that. A nice fight back coming in, though. That's going to drop the Thermite and the Diffuser, most importantly. Second scan coming in as he tries to find the trade, but no, Bravo Dog still gets the better of it. Finally, looks like Habibi was able to take him out of the play, but now he is basically alone here. No. He got Noski back up and retrieved the Diffuser, but they used Habibi as bait, was able to use that to get Blar in a trade right there to knock out Habibi and Noski alone. No hope in the world of doing this, unfortunately. Did start to hit the F button at zero, but it looks like he a little bit too late. So Parallax get control of this round. Such a nice try by both teams, but can we express how thankful that <laughs> Parallax Gaming is that Mozzie put in so much work? Mozzie with the amazing flank when Ramiro went down, Mozzie with the wall bane to go ahead and get it down, and Blarn was there for the refrag the moment Bravo Dog finally got beat in the gunfight. Such a great round from Bravo Dog in general, along with the rest of his team. Cry Magic with Mirror really didn't have a huge play from what we saw on the screen, but I'm, I'm just gonna mark it up to just Mozzie taking over. That's what you want from Rome Presence, period. Yeah, I would agree with that, Mozzie in general, pretty much deciding a lot of the outcome of that round, especially there at the end, and even setting up his team for multiple other kills after he goes into a down state, did a great job of delaying that. Probably relaying some info. Would have loved to hear the comms from that round, just to hear how that breaks down. As that was some great play from Parallax towards the end of it in order to win it for them. And so that finally locks down one of their sites. They could have gone back to the third floor and made another attempt at that, but they are going to continue to rotate around the circle here and head down to the first floor instead. Yeah, the EOD from the Lion could have been used earlier on in the round when it came to interactions with Mozzie. That could have helped out Parallax Gaming. I mean, yes, excuse me, could have helped out Katsu a lot when it came to attacking Parallax Gaming. As long as Bravo Dog is going to be on the board with Mozzie, he is basically in his own game right now. He's by himself, he's doing whatever he wants, and it's going to be up to Katsu to be able to shut him down before they even think about getting on site because you saw how important it is that they wash their flank at all times. Mira could have been such an easy kill, but with Mozzie there, it made, it made the task that much more complicated. So BB might find himself in a gunfight shortly if he happens to step through this door. There's player prone right now. Attackers dropped the diffuser. Attackers recovered the diffuser. But patience is going to pay off momentarily. It's not going to be any quick pick at all. Makarov once again peeking in, trying to see if he can find his angle to play off of here. On that top window side, a lot of spam coming out as well to breach this open. Obviously can give him a little bit more room to play with if he wants it, but he won't really be taking that. Default cam is going to be left unshut out there, but more than likely the info wasn't given over before uh, it was able to deal with it. So we're still going to end up in a pretty safe situation here as once again Katsu starts their round off here by trying to clear out the second floor and deal with the roaming presence here. So Makarov once more coming into the second floor, but it's going to be better for this site because you can see him come through. No, no, no. Six is going to find himself in an encounter, but is Sophia going to back him up? I wonder if they're going to try to pinch him, but with the rotation coming up the stairs, is Six might have a problem. No, he's going to be able to peek the top of Cry Magic's head. Nice headshot coming in from him. 
Just hear the rotation happening. Blarn's also going to get knocked out here too. And wow. six isolates Bravo before he can find impact from the inside of the library. Great opener on the round. And Parallax, man, really aggressive once again here. Attack Extending out by quite a bit. And that could potentially cost them. Unless somehow in this 2v5, continuing to get aggressive from those side stairs is going to work out for them, which I highly doubt at this point. Okay, oh, a missed bit of Jaeger play. What's going on? He missed them. They're back over in uh, trains right now. He thought they went downstairs. Right, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's kind of weird. They're trying to, they're trying to like do something different right here. Oh no, he knows exactly what he's going for. He, he left the two players that was on cycle four to go in from the flank. Here we get a nice headshot, but that's not going to be it. But a one v four is going to be a huge flank. Paid off a little bit. Wasn't a play that was as big as he wanted it to be. He wanted the double kill, able to pull out one, leaving shrines all in on this maestro, and he just didn't have an answer for what was thrown at him. So, Mean and Katsu able to pull out that win. Heading into round number 11, once again, <laughs> tied game. <laughs> tied game. Just can't escape that, can we? Not at all. This is the deepest it's gone while still being tied, though. I think I think all the other matches kind of like got resolved at this point or started to get resolved by this point. So basically the way it's going to work from this point forward, if either team wins two rounds consecutively, that's it. That's the game. But if they trade again, we're going to go to OT. And that's going to be a final three rounds in order to decide who our winner is tonight. And most importantly, who goes on to join DZ in the uh, Eastern Conference qualifier. Apparently, whoever chooses Defenders Twitch as an operator just turns into a god. <laughs> it's almost a, a guaranteed um, 2K, so to say, whenever you run into it. The high rate of fire and just the amazing power that that gun has. It's just been phenomenal. As you see, it's six. Has the most kills in the game right now, choosing Twitch every single round. Wow. Was it Glamoji who had Twitch on um, the flip in as well? I think it was, yeah. Yeah. Pretty sure. So both Twitch mains are um, top ranked. Go for it. Twitch is a new Ash. I think that happened a couple months ago. <laughs> After the A card removal. So we are going to see Parallax once again try to hold off upstairs. This has been uh, their kryptonite so far. Katsu have attacked this twice successfully in a one. So once again, we do actually no, excuse me. They, we do have the mirror in play this time, although the setup for them is going to be a little bit different. They don't want to give up that second reinforcement wall or reinforced wall in freezer and have to hold that door with a lot more, you know, with a lot more emphasis on it. Yeah. So instead, they put the second mirror across from the maestro spot to just watch that push from red stairs um, and just do one of those little like one of those like soft wall mirrors where they put it on the bottom and you can kind of use the mirror itself as an extra reinforcement. But this is where things get scary. Oh, Paradise right. Gaming. Oh, okay. That only. <laughs> Man, Cry was ready to go with that one. Cry is. Which that... window is that? Uh, oh, oh, is the Christmas window that they've been peeking every single time first? <laughs> R.I.P. So um, I think they just timing that one. That was nice. What was I even gonna say at this point? I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> 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 okay. They can't go through the motions like that so predictably. That's how they've got the read on them. <laughs> that or they had some crazy camera out there, but... Yeah, but nonetheless, though, Paralyzed Gaming, they found themselves in a two-round advantage. The fact that they allowed Katsu to win two straight to go ahead and tie it up. Katsu, if they go ahead and take the lead, they are going to be a match point, and I would expect them to go ahead and run away with this. It seems like the, the, the flame that Parallax once had is starting to fizzle out. We need an answer now. We, we've seen what Katsu have done with their backs against the wall. And this team has done a phenomenal job. And already moving in towards Cigar is going to be a BB. He's not going to be contested just yet. But the pre-fire through the wall isn't going to connect. His mirror is going to be on the opposite end of him. They just got a drone to the inside of this room too. So they're going to know what the setup looks like here. They know they've got the Maestro on the left side and a potential mirror peak to come from the right side of that. So more than likely have to avoid pushing that area directly. We will see one of the charges go in towards the back though. Should have been able to knock out one of the evil eye cameras. Another one still sits on the side of the main site, however. All right. So it's going to be all about who attacks next. Paralyzed Saving currently up an advantage and but the roam play coming in from Bravo Dog underneath. We've all seen what he's capable of, but they haven't been successful on this site. They played it twice, lost twice, but they're looking to pick up a win this time around. The Shrines picks up a headshot, and Habibi, I don't know what he was trying to do, but the pre-fire caught him as well. Two Ks all around as Mean joins the party, and Shrines picks up the triple kill. 3v1 in favor of Parallax. Falls apart so quickly for Katsu here as well. The second they try to start getting aggressive, they get ripped to shreds, and 
even in the attempts to trade out the player downstairs. Perfect yeah, timing from the peak on the Maestro across the other side of the site there as he pretty much single-handedly shuts down the rest of that push and he's Makarov alone to his own devices here where he will be shut out by Blorn and Parallax will get to match point first. There wasn't anything he could do about it, man. So unfortunate. And the, the wrong play from down low definitely was the reason why that they won. With all the pressure on Bravo Dog as Mozzie, we all saw what Shrine did. The moment they started jumping down balcony, started paying attention down low underneath the soft destruction, that's where the headshots came in. And he was able to just rip them all apart without a 556. So, Parallax Gaming here on match point of the night. They win this. This will be the second time they've gone through this phase and won the finals. So, I believe it was the Eastern Conference as well. They did it on. Yeah. So, yeah. The Parallax, they, they, they want to run the East. This is it. Parallax have claimed their home stake and they're going to try and dominate in it. So we will see if they're going to be able to do it. Nothing wrong with that, though. Had a couple teams flip already. I mean, EG even flipped as they were uh, they were East Coast last year when they played in USN, but they're playing they the were. West Coast now. So. Which makes sense because they actually are physically the West Coast. So. <laughs> True. All right, so here it is. If Katsu wins this round, though, that means we're going to overtime. But Shrines is going to join Glamoji in the double digits club. 10 kills, 11 kills. But it's six still on top for his team. But you cannot depend on the Twitch and F2 to win it all. It's going to be a team effort that they're going to have to go ahead and coordinate to take down Parallax. And if they happen to win this one round, they're going to have to win a best of three after that. So we're looking at three rounds total. The next four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gonna have to win three of the next four rounds in order to win this game. Parallax, in the meantime, they're gonna win just one now or two if we go in overtime. I mean, three of the next four, and they have to win this one. They have to win this one, yes. So if they lose this one, Parallax have got the mash, and they're going on to join DZ. We'll have another chance at revenge there. Will they play DZ? Uh, I don't think I don't know if they'll play them. I think they'll be on the opposite side of the bracket from them if I'm remembering how it works out. Oh. But I might be wrong on that. What if they meet in the finals again? That could be dope. For a chance to go at land, I know Blarn is going to turn out. You know DZ is going to be happy if they get to play them in a best of three for once too, right? Oh, oh, one Cause million like, cause DZ, percent. Because DZ probably thinks they can like easily two of them in a best of one or best <laughs> of three. But but also we'll at the end of the day, it's easier said than done. It's easier said than done. DZ has gone through struggles as well. That could be uh, that could be a real spot for Parallax to prove themselves, or DZ to like just shut them down. Completely. Oh my God! If Blarn goes land, the community is going to flip. That'll be so <laughs> dope to see. But it's six shutting down Bravo Dog. Great way to start the game if you want to go to overtime. We can, uh, we can get him some ten dollar broccoli again. <laughs> so chat, just so you know, we went to a really fancy restaurant. <laughs> I'm talking about like hundred dollar steaks, story. right? <laughs> Everyone orders these hundred dollar steaks. And all of a sudden, as we're drinking wine and being bougie, we all look over, and Blarn is sitting there with broccoli bigger than both of your hands put together. It was a tree. Basically, Blarn didn't know that at these kinds of places, <laughs> the sides are a la carte and you have to order them separately. Yes. So he just ordered broccoli thinking it was a normal side. <laughs> what he didn't realize was not only was this a giant side of broccoli, <laughs> but it was $10. <laughs> Literally someone... <laughs> For steamed broccoli. <laughs> someone grabbed a tree from out the ground and put it on the plate. <laughs> that was Florence Moon. He just stayed there and just stared at him. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, Mac. No. <laughs> what? Okay, it's all right. He got behind that vent. I was choked. I must spit. Makarov, what are you doing? <laughs> broccoli oh. stories and in NA-nades. I can't take it. <laughs> BB's going to be able to strike, however, and this is on top of Bravo Dog also already being found out there. So we end up in a five versus three situation with a minute to go. Parallax again, have to be very careful about how they proceed here. Blarn moving in slowly, but with the EOD in place, everyone's gonna be at a standstill. This is gonna be it underneath a minute now. What's Blarn gonna do here on third floor? Trying to look for any type of players underneath him by opening up the hatch. He's been definitely put on notice as mean. Comes up from the side and hits him with a nice kill. There's gonna be Katsu's chance to go ahead and take it overtime. EOD in play and Diffuser currently going down. It's gonna help out Katsu a lot as Natsuki rips a headshot and this is looking like a flawless execution. All of the shrines and there you have it. Katsu is gonna force overtime against Parallax Gaming now. We're in scary territory now. And what a difference from the previous round, right? It was yes. Parallax that dominated back upstairs, and finally, too, after Katsu had been winning those, but now it's Katsu that shows up, knows they have to win that one, and triggers the OT. We are tied. It's 6-6, six, six, so we're going the distance. The next three rounds will decide this match. The first team to eight wins it. Chat, 
Let me know what you think. All right, I see Sko in the chat. Sko's a big idiot, so just ignore him. But chat, who do you think is going to take this? I want to see it in the chat. PG or Katsu? Let me know now. We are going to get into this round right now. Take a look and see. No six picks going to be utilized by either team. They will stick with the current lineup of Attack operators that they've got. And away from that, go back to the third floor once again. Quick reminder, when you enter overtime, the sight locks are reset. So Parallax can now go back upstairs, even though they just won here two rounds ago and technically have not satisfied that minimum requirement. But like I said, in overtime, everything resets. That was so good on the side of Katsu. Katsu looking strong. You can't count him out at all. Down by two rounds, able to fight back, winning two in a row, taking it to overtime, forcing Parallax Gaming's hand. Let's see if they have what it takes to close this out now. Best of three. Who's going to take it? So we all saw the phenomenal Twitch play coming in from both teams, and it's six is going to have his hand and using her for the very first time here in overtime. It's been a phenomenal entry fracker for this roster. Lion has had his role as well. But coming off of a flawless victory, Katsu, they got to be living. They got to be on Scott Cloud9 right now. Well, not that, that, not that Cloud9. Not that, yeah. yeah, not that Cloud9. <laughs> They're happy. They're happy. <laughs> Sorry. That was a low-hanging fruit there. I got it. <laughs> We're going to see Six move in here, taking on a little bit of utility. Finally not getting tricked up by, that, uh, by the Mozzies here, <laughs> as he's been stealing quite a few of them. It's actually been Makarov that's been getting the majority of the stolen one from the Zap other him. side. Zap him in the booty. Do it. <laughs> what is he doing? Yeah, I don't... What? I think he's trying to sneak past him. What is the meaning of this? This is, a, this is like a stealth mission right now. And that's if you don't move, he just doesn't... He might be calling for a teammate, too. That could be why he's <laughs> staying on this. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't move, Bravo Dog won't see you. <laughs> it's actually like Yokai. You just, you just you sit there long enough, you just turn invisible. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, they, they buffed them in the recent. Oh, no, no. I think they're trying to gang up on Bravo Dog right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a collective effort at the moment. So trying to find him out early on to make sure he's not going to mess with them later. He's definitely had a few gruels for eight rounds. It's not Bravo, though. It's Cry from the inside of the second floor, actually, that finds this Mira just roaming way over there. And in the meantime, wow, Six is going to run one of those Twitch drones outside. Yeah, Twitch was just skydiving. So I was wondering, I was like, wait, did, did they actually turn into Yokai drones? Free falling. <laughs> <laughs> just doing tricks. It's the X Games, apparently, of drones. <laughs> Flying battle. What is that event? <laughs> All right, but Barn on fire again. Able to get that kill, but the refrag happens as Mean Sama is on the board. Let's see what happens. Now down to a minute and five seconds. This is crunch time, but Katsu on attack. You still have Twitch left alive. All right, this can be it. Bravo Dog still has his Nitro Cell too, importantly. Yeah, Bravo Dog underneath has just been a pest, and they have no answer for him at all. But you know what? That C4 is going to be off his mark as Six goes ahead and repels in. But Mean with the knife is going to go ahead and stab Bravo Dog in the back. I wonder how that happened. I took him down and ran up to him. Yeah. That's how I get all my knife kills. <laughs> Mean in the meantime is going to try to go for a bit of spam over there towards the white stairs. We'll just miss the mark. Slightly off and trying to spam through. So Mean is a little bit stuck right now. He doesn't have a safe way to push past that, but he's going to end up having to just challenge that more than likely. There's only 30 seconds left, and the come team on, is on, dead on, even right now with their opponents. All right, EOD currently in place, and here goes the hot breach. Repel coming in from Twitch. Yeah, Shrines is ready. 3v2 for Parallax, and make it a 3v1, 3v9. Parallax wins round number 13. One more round to go, and they will be winners tonight. Katsu, wake up. Nice final shot there from Shrines as well. Just a smooth little one tap to finish off on the headshot. And so now we go into one of our final rounds of the match, potentially our final round of the match. If Parallax can follow through and win it, remind you, we're on attack here now. The teams will start switching sides every single round in overtime. So Katsu can also go back to defending upstairs. Mind you, though, this is where they won the most yeah. on their defense. In fact, if memory serves me correctly, the only sites they won was this one. Yeah, the main factor, I mean, yeah, the main factor in the strategy is the fact that Katsu is just all out better with Mira. The fact that Mira wasn't banned, I, I have no idea why. Katsu has been just giving it to Parallax every time they utilize her. Like, they've had such a hard time getting her off of the map. She's been a factor. So, Attack Parallax, hopefully, they, they found can. a way around that strategy. But I'm, I'm just going to doubt it. I'm, I'm going to have to see it to believe it. Katsu, 
Can they tie it up again? A back and forth battle, and it's all come down to this. Parallax with one round away from moving on and winning the finals. So 25 seconds until the teams are going to be let out. The attacking team, anyway, is going to be let out onto the field here. And we should expect that same setup from Katsu that we're seeing at the beginning of the matchup here. Let's take a look at the stats again right there, too, to see some of the front runners that we have in the matchup right now. It definitely seems like we've Got a bit more of a frag-heavy game here, at least for Parallax compared to what we had before. It was very much a team effort. They had to switch away from that as Katsu definitely proving to be a little bit more of a challenge than what they faced off against previously. Now, once again, it's pretty much a mirror match. You know that Mozzie has been a threat on both sides. Bravo Dog has done a phenomenal job downing this operator, but it's going to be Makarov's turn. Makarov has been phenomenal so far today in general. But can his roaming save his team from elimination? All right. Teams are going to start off, of course, by moving into position on top of the roof here. And then same as we've been seeing the whole game here, folks. Just pop open the hatches, start working their way in, deal with that wall at the top of Red Stairs, then into Christmas, where they will try to deal with the walls leading into the freezer and then to the site from that point forward and obviously kind of make some small adjustments to the strat if needed. All right. This is it. Game time. A little drone work coming in in front of Bravo Dog, and that's going to be his Guardian Angel for the time being. But it's six. Immediately realized that the drone is in his vicinity, and Raiding Room is going to turn out into a huge battle. With Concussion currently in play at six, it's going to be a hard time for him to go ahead and win in this gunfight, but Makarov is going to jump in, taking down Cry Magic against six falls as well. Great altercation between both teams as one player gets down on each side. In a moment here now, we're going to have Makarov potentially be able to take the duel from the other side of this one, too. Both teams just waiting for the other one to make a move. Attackers will have to push eventually. Oh, man. Neither one wanting to do it, though, but there is a drone coming up behind Makarov. They don't know exactly oh! where he is, but what was that Glamoji scheme like? He swung away at the Mac. last second. Mac gets the better of it. He can now fall back. Oh, he's ready for this push as well. They peek him from here. No! Oh! This time, Blarn gets the better of Makarov, takes him out. Brings us down into a 3v3, and Blarn, I think this is happening. I think he just accidentally found a BB. Blarn is getting loose right now. He's off one. Able to pop a headshot through the soft destruction, and underneath Bravo Dog's trying to get one as well, but he's unable to do it. The player was able to crouch walk away from danger. But Mean Sum is going to have a player coming in his face any moment now, rotating up these white stairs. Will he? Not sure. Uh, yeah, he's going to be able to run away from that. To bring us down into the 3v2. Parallax still with an advantage, yes, but mind you, they're on the wrong floor right now. They still need to get upstairs and commit to this push. And getting past that, it's not going to be easy, but Blarn striking yet again. Able to find Noski, brutes it all on Mean. Mean knows the push is going to come up these stairs in a second. He proactively chases it down, finds that kill, but the flash will blind him. Bravo Dog and Blarn now have free movement for these next few seconds here. As Mean was only just now able to start getting into position. All right. Pink's coming out from his teammates. They know they pushed to the inside of the main site here. He can move in. He's got the arm. He can drop the diffuser into the 1v1, but no tries to run back. Parallax. Blarn will finish it off with the immediate trade, and they will take the match. 8-6 to six in the favor of Parallax, and they go through to the Eastern Conference qualifiers. What amazing finish coming in from Parallax Gaming. This game says hard-fought victory. Great effort all around from every player on both sides. But Shrines, he's going to be your in-game MVP. Take a look at this. 12 kills for Shrines. 12 kills for Glamoji. Blarn, Blarn is phenomenal. Blarn is that guy. Blarn, if you're watching this, you were amazing. <laughs> Getting that 3K that round, Blarn really came in clutch whenever the game came really close later on in the half. And Parallax, they're lucky to have him. Blarn, you're great. <laughs> what more to say? How many times can I say you're great? You're, you're amazing. <laughs> Good job, great effort. We just gotta work on your uh, your your broccoli buying skills. Yeah, you, yeah he, he can't offer. He can't. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's, <laughs> it's such a good story. <laughs> if you guys saw the size of that piece of broccoli, it was <laughs> it's on his Twitter somewhere. I'm sure. Like he just sat there looking like a sad puppy. <laughs> <laughs> but with the winnings he's gonna get if he goes to land, he'll be able to buy all the broccoli he wants, and that's gonna be if they're able to win it out to go to land. This was the first step. One more to go, and yeah, parallax. Gonna have to give it up to him. Cover me, reload 
Still, though, a great night for Katsu here. Definitely showing up with some really strong performances back on Clubhouse specifically. We had their really strong buck play, be able to carry them through multiple rounds on attack right here. We also managed to have, of course, just great play across the board from a large majority of their players, proving once again they can play into this map and probably going to prove to be a force to be reckoned with, more than likely replacing Parallax in a lot of the spots we've seen them play over the last two weeks. Now I would definitely be expecting to see Katsu make their way through once again and try to qualify in other spots, number three or four. No, we, we should definitely, I know we say this every time with Katsu, I mean, still, they lost in overtime here to qualify, and that, that's really a big blow. But I, I'm really expecting to see this team again. We've, we've seen a lot of talent coming into USN, and they've made it to the finals and just barely losing. Yeah, it, it sucks and all, and they have to go through the qualifiers again. But if you're that good as a team, I expect you to make it. And they know that they can make it as well. So, hats off to Parallax Gaming, fighting week in and week out to make it this far. And man, I like I just wonder what it's like on their side and their comms once they make it this far. Mm -hmm. like, they, they have to be ecstatic. This is a great bait right here too in this specific play with Bravadol because they knew he was going to be dead, right? But he called it out to a teammate. Teammate on a balcony immediately gets the trade. That was such a great call out coming in and Six just finishing on top of that. Six, of course, doing some work here on the Twitch, as we've been seeing before. The Twitch really proving useful for both teams in this matchup as well. Quint set to the entry power and, I guess, round-ending capabilities for each team, too. Yeah. So, which team was it that um, banned Mirror again? Um, that, I mean, that um, banned Valkyrie and didn't ban Mirror? I think it was Katsu that had made that decision. Really? Pretty sure. I mean, I don't blame them. Katsu, they, they knew how to utilize her well. I mean, they... they they're they pretty dynamic with her. They started defense, so I think they get the outer two bands, if I remember correctly. Yeah. First and last. Big time, mean time. And that was such a heartbreaking loss. He tried to clutch this up. He almost got it. They would have killed the diffuser, and then, you know, his backup just came right in. Snatched that kill. Oh, no. So unfortunate, just a little bit of a mispositioning there. But still, ended up closing out on the round anyway, thankfully due to having the position to trade. And so Parallax go forth. Both of our week one uh, winners or teams that made it to the final final match, at least a week one, have now made it through. And that's opened the floodgates to a lot more teams to try and qualify here in future weeks as well. As we don't necessarily know where things are going to go from here. We still have Rise, of course, looking for a spot. And yeah. we've been able to get one in stage two, if memory serves me correctly. And we'll once again have to do it here. Yes, but ladies and gentlemen, let's jump right into the interview. I think it's Broccoli Man. Is it? Broccoli, hey, Yokin, Blarn, how you been? <laughs> Yo, what's good, Veli? How did you, doing, you man? Did you play with the beanie on for real? Bro, the barber messed up my head, bro. Like, I have to play with the beanie on. Like, Can we get a sneak peek? She messed me up, man. No, you can't get a How bad peek. is no. it on a scale of one to ten? No, it's bad, bro. Like, it's bad. Maybe at the end of the interview. Like, like he we'll makes see. it this far in USN, and the barber scares away the eagles. Unfortunate. So, yeah. <laughs> Blarn, familiar territory, man. Once again, you made it this far. <laughs> I mean, I expected yeah. it, to be honest. You guys are amazing. You know, it's, it's normal, yeah. right? So, um, yeah. you guys beat Dark Zero. You lost in that um, best of three qualifier. Now you have a chance to do it again. What yeah. have you learned this time around that, um, no, yeah, what have you learned this time around that you could fix from your mistakes in the past as a team? Um, well, since, like, the first time we beat Dark Zero as a team with our two new pickups, so we picked up Shrines and Glow, and yes. they've basically been like vital like improvements to our team. And basically what we've learned is we're not disrespecting any team. We play every game the same. Even these guys, these are just like, a, this is a pickup team of CL players and they put up a fight. They beat Rise, they beat a CL they team. They were. Yeah, They're we, really we just good. Don't, we don't sleep on anyone. Um, and also shout out to our two coaches, Forceful and High. Like these two games we played, we had complete like info on like everything they did. And um, have really helped us and that like gave us the edge. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, so I'm blown. Were you as shocked as me when you saw Mira in play? I expected a Mira ban. Have you guys had any practice against Mira, and how did that affect you in the game? Okay, so we, um, <laughs> normally, I'm gonna be honest, that game was way too close. We are yeah. not satisfied with how we played that game. It was a terrible performance from us. And um, when the Mira was up, we we haven't actually attacked us in any scrims with a Mira, so um, that was very hard, in my opinion. Yeah. And we, we somehow pulled it out, but great job to them though their mirror holds were insane they played uh played passive they played correctly on the mirrors and it was definitely a it was a road bump uh, that's uh, a yeah. <laughs> all right so, so bar last one for the day um i want you to flex on camera and just let everybody in the chat know you guys are coming for heads uh, and that, and uh, uh, we're gonna see you at lamb Blarn. let them know oh, there we go uh, 
Oh, okay. <laughs> you My man's it, yoked. Bro. Okay, good. Yo, it's that broccoli, Belly. Like, what's good? <laughs> <laughs> like, what's good with it? Wait, did you ever eat that broccoli? Show the chat how big the broccoli actually was. Oh, bro. Well, that exaggerated. Damn. Amazon forest trees of broccoli, bro. Like one one thing was like this big, and I had two plates of those. Blue and Valley, remember that? Shit? It was so funny, man. <laughs> yes, Blard, I love you, man. I'm so happy for you going ahead and winning tonight. Hey, good luck, all right. I hope to see you at land. Real quick, what's up? Shout out to Mega Dial and shout out to Corey from the Giants. That's my boy. I love you guys. We flex it for him. Valley, I love you. Blue, I love you. Love you and, too, uh, man. Shout out to the fans. I love you all. Thank you for the support, haters. Appreciate it too. Appreciate all the tweets saying we weren't gonna win. And all I gotta say is good night. See you tomorrow for CL. That's on God. Hey Blarn, dominate CL, man. Good luck. I'll see you at land, all right? I appreciate you. Thank you, Veli. Thank you, Blue. <laughs> all right, take it easy. So shout out to it's Meg a, in the chat. It's always a good time, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's Blarn, just flexing and winning. <laughs> uh, I wanted to see what that haircut looked like. Not this time. Barnes' life is a movie. Does everything. Just, <laughs> that's, how he, that's how he gets us, right? He broccoli, keeps, haircut. keeps us on the hook for the next one. <laughs> right. Now we need to know what his hair looks like. The, <laughs> like, the biceps save him, but that's about it. <laughs> so, uh, MVPs, you want to go ahead and start? Oh, I guess I'll start off. My MVP is going to be Bravo Dog, man. Bravo Dog was so phenomenal. He was, he was such a playmaker. So, the reason why I chose Bravo Dog wasn't because of the stats, it was just the, the pressure that he kept applying from underneath. Verticality wasn't in his favor. No, it was in his favor as Mozzie. He was hacking drones, calling out intel for his teammates. The C4s weren't on mark, but his gunfire still kept his team in the game, and his flanks were awesome. That's my MVP. He's the man, and he's a big reason why this team won. This is always really awkward. Um, yeah, mine's also Bravo <laughs> <You're a copy laughs> as well. Counter. And uh, I'm kind of just going to like control C, control V, what Veli just said, because mine's the same exact point. Is the Mozzie play from him was just absolutely phenomenal. Um, and, and like that alone, and the ability he was able to distract and obviously pick up quite a few kills in the process as well, uh, is what earned him my vote tonight. Yes. I still I want to know what his haircut looks like. It can't be that bad. <laughs> it can't be that bad, OK? <laughs> Chronicles, man, the Chronicles of War. <laughs> so haircut, man, he's gonna be at top of uh, 13 to 9, 71 percent cost, and um, one clutch to the day is the Ash and Kaid name. Mm -hmm. It's pretty funny, Ash and Kaid. Um, is two entirely different operators in regards to playstyle. One, you're you're extremely aggressive, and yeah, you're challenging these fights. And the other, you know, your team relies on you for utility and patience, and yeah, steady aim, of course, but yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. Well, there you have our stats once again with the leaders. Like Veli just said, we got six in Mean Green that was still up at the top there for the guys on Katsu as they tried to push their way through this one. But fell just short, like I said, though. It definitely came bursting on to the broadcast this evening, and I'm sure we are going to see some form of that roster either next week or in some of the future weeks. We'll take a look at some of the overall stats as well here, Ooh. too. Very close in the kill department. Just one off. Even openers, right? I mean, look at this. Six to eight. Not much of a difference there. Two to one on clutches. Uh, Katsu definitely got more plants down at the end of the day. But yeah, I mean, Parallax still coming out on top at the end of it, especially towards the end. It seemed like Katsu, unfortunately, just kind of like lost a little bit of steam towards the end of that one and yeah. just didn't have enough to push it over. E either way you put it, it was an even game, but I feel like the, the determining factor was the fact that Valkyrie was banned. Like, I, I, I'm betting that Parallax was expecting the mirror ban, as he says, we don't practice against the mirror. She's never chosen on that map because of how strong she is. And the fact that they were like, all right, you know, let's troll. Let's ban Valkyrie instead. Let's ban Mira. <laughs> like, like, that was uh, the difference to me. But, um, yeah, that's it for me. Yeah, that's going to do it for me as well, folks. So thank you all very much for tuning in. We will be back once again on Tuesday with our next broadcast. But don't forget our Inside the USN show, which also goes live on Mondays on the Rainbow Six YouTube channel. We'll be uploading it there then. And that's where you can also find the winners of our Venmo contest every week. So if we don't catch you for our Monday show, we'll see you once again on Tuesday for the next West Conference Open Qualifier here at USN.